Welcome to Suffolk Matters, where all of Suffolk County meets the men and women of Suffolk AME. News, opinions, and insights you won't hear anywhere else. Here's your host, the president of New York's largest independent union, Suffolk AME's Dan Leveler. Welcome to another edition of Suffolk Matters on Walk 97.5 and 94.3 The Shark, where Suffolk County meets the men and women of Suffolk AME. News and views you can't hear anywhere else. So my guest this morning is Congressman Andrew Garbarino, uh, candidate for the 2nd Congressional District. Good morning. Morning, Dan. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while, you know, and, and we talked a lot when you were uh, in the assembly and getting things done, and we really haven't had a chance to catch up on how things have been going for you in Washington, and we want to get into all of that. Uh, but first and foremost, let's let's just do a little history, a little review. I know, I know, I know you know, but for our listeners, how'd you get involved in government? How was how was your path to Congress? Uh, well, uh, I first was elected to the state assembly back in two thousand and twelve, uh, ten years ago, actually this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, came out of nowhere. Uh, Phil Boyle was was the state assemblyman. Uh, Owen Johnson retired. Uh, Phil ran for that Senate seat. And they needed someone to run for the state assembly seat, and they, they came to me and they asked if I if I was interested. And at that point, I didn't even know what the state assembly was. <laughs> I right. say that, um, but it was probably one of the best decisions of my life because I spent eight years in Albany uh, learning uh, so much about New York State, so much about the legislative process, uh, which has completely uh, helped me in my in my two years now in in Congress down in Washington D.C. Uh, you know. Albany's like a mini Washington D.C. You know, you're dealing with a lot of issues, uh, all you know, from health care to public safety, uh, you know, insurance, all, all sorts of things. Um, and and uh, we're doing the same thing down in Washington. So my eight years in Albany was definitely very good, uh, helping me uh, get experience for for what I'm doing now in Washington. Sure, and you know, the mechanics of government is very interesting. You know, you can you can take all the civic lessons you want, and then actually learn how. It <laughs> right. Uh, you know, I mean, the the the, the day to day operations of government, you know, in Albany, in Suffolk County, uh, on the national level, you know, how things actually get done is a lot of people talking to people, building consensus and, you know, a lot of decisions. You know, when you talk about what work you had to do on the assembly side, and I'm sure you could say the same is true for for congressional positions. Um there's going to be winners and losers on these big, big issues. So figuring out how, you know, sometimes it's triage, you know, the 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 smallest cut wins, right? What we did in Albany, you know, I, I, I'm a Republican, and uh, we had an, we were in the extreme minority in Albany. So there wasn't much negotiation that, that would happen between the Assembly, Republicans, Assembly, Democrats. Um, there was a little, you know, there was more between the, the, the Senate Republicans uh, usually did a lot of more negotiation because they were, were in control. Sure. But in Washington— the majority difference between the majority and the minority is five seats. Right. So it's a very, very tight. Uh, uh, there's there's not many votes to give up. So right. there is a lot more dialogue between both sides. A, a lot of the bills uh, are negotiated um, through committee. You know, making sure that uh, issues are taken care of before things come to the floor. That's why you know I sit on both the Small Business Committee and the Homeland Security Committee, and. Uh, when we pass bills out of those those two committees, a lot of the time they're unanimous mm-hmm. because it's something that we can work out ahead of time. You know, it, it's you can get to the, the crux of an issue and and solve it uh, and and kind of make everybody happy. Uh, not that doesn't work on everything, and as we're seeing, there's a lot of uh, partisan votes. You know, uh, where one some uh, Democrats are on one side, Republicans are on the other, and that and that happens. That's part you know that is sure. part of the game. But a lot of the stuff because the majorities are so tight, uh, there is a lot of uh, discussions and, and negotiations to make sure that look we can't just do nothing because we don't agree on everything right. but we have to work we have to work together and, and get important stuff done it's just my impression and i you know i like to get your take on it as well just you know you're, you're the man in the room so to speak uh but when you talk about you know sometimes there's party line votes i feel like that stuff gets sensationalized a lot you hear a lot about that stuff and the great work that gets done when consensus is built and it is a bipartisan effort and whatever. And those those things don't tend to be made such a big deal of. And I've seen great work come out of Albany, great work come out of, uh, you know, Congress and the Senate uh, that was bipartisan efforts that really have a great impact on everybody.
But the the big shout that's in everybody's face is like, oh, all of this group voted against this, or all of this group voted against that. You know? Yeah, I mean, and and it's and half of it is the media, and half of it is you know, you're, you're, people are selling a story, and and uh, and and it's all about viewership. So, uh, you know, it, it's sexy to, to to talk about the big fight. Sure. It's not sure. you know you know to, to talk about so, oh everybody agreed came together agreed to this. You know, it doesn't get you many viewers. So I I, I yeah. get it, but you know, my message is it's it's not as bad as it appears on the media. I mean, right. There is a lot of people working together uh, to get things done. Uh, there's a lot of, there are bills that have been very good, uh, bipartisan bills uh, that have done great things, especially, you know, for New York, we, we've been able to do a lot. I, uh, you know, I, I know we were going to talk about it at some point, the the infrastructure bill. Sure. Um, that, that passed Congress, Massive. the bipartisan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Passed out of the Senate with 69 votes, mm -hmm. uh, which was, you know, it's a Senate's right now split 50-50, and you had, it was bipartisan, 69 uh, members of the Senate voted for it, and then passed out of the House uh, on a bipartisan level. It was a little less bipartisan than it probably should have, but it, you know, for, for someone from New York, I voted for the bill. It is, over five years, we're seeing 100, at least $120 billion, with a B. Billion, yes. Invested in New York infrastructure. That's roads, mm -hmm. that's bridges. It's the Long Island Railroad, it's 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 sewers, airports, it's it's everything that we we needed investment in, on for years. Yes, we're finally now getting it. I mean, when we when we pass this bill, and this is very important for people who, who live on Long Island, uh, and who take the Long Island Railroad into the city every day, who bill whose tickets go up every year. When we pass this bill, uh, the governor announced that uh, because of this bill. They would not be increasing fares. I mean, yeah. that that's actual money in people's pockets. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a huge win, and it's something that uh, you know over the next couple of years will continue to, to grow on. And you know, you're you're seeing vast improvements. I took I took the uh, Southern State on the way to the studio this morning, freshly paved yes. because of that bill. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of good things. A lot of things that are happening because of that bill that are affecting uh, the day to day lives of, of Long Islanders in a positive way. Sure. You know, and you mentioned two committees that you sit on, small business and homeland security, and infrastructure is tied into that, right? You know, I mean, it, it, government isn't just little little unconnected box, boxes of things. Everything is woven together, and infrastructure is the base for everything. You want to see growth for small businesses? Put sewers in. Get better, you know, get better services, These those core underlying services that everybody need. Uh, so that's that's a huge win. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, especially for me and my members, I want to, I want to thank you for, uh, being on the right side of that, as we see it being on the right side of that issue, uh, because that's going to mean, uh, good jobs, not just for us and our members, but for working people mm -hmm. in the region, which means stimulation of the economy, people having enough money to buy things and keep things going. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, again, it's, it's that ball of twine, everything all, all wound together. Yep, everything is connected. Yeah. It, it's great, and yeah, Suffolk County will see, especially the, even the county. The they're getting a lot of money also from this infrastructure bill. So it's you're going to see from the state, the feds, down to the the county, the towns. Everybody is going to be able to, to finally address projects that need to get done. It's awesome. Yeah, great. So I guess one last thing, just on on you know recent history. You know, how have you found the last two years for you? You know, being in Congress. You know, I, I, you know, I dealt with you a lot in the assembly. Uh, we would physically see each other because I had to go up there for work reasons, and so did you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, how 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 do you feel the work has been for you the last few years? Well, it's you know, it's it's been tough for everyone. You know, COVID has made things. Uh, you know, I took office uh, January third. Uh, I was sworn in twenty twenty one. You know, and. And most of Washington D.C. was shut down. Mm -hmm. um, most of the country was shut down yeah. uh, due to COVID. Uh, not only the campaign. I mean, it was the craziest campaign for Congress I've ever had to run because you, you know, you, you couldn't go. There, there were no events to go meet people, to go meet voters. Couldn't knock on doors. It was a very, it was a very interesting uh, campaign. But being in office, um, again, I said before, thank God uh, for for my previous experience in in Albany because. I could I could hit the ground running, right. and I saw a lot of my colleagues who had never been in government before struggle with you know how what staff to hire you know who do you know what are the priorities you know constituent service is a big priority a lot of people don't get that they think you know communications is number one it, it you know so I had an easier I think start than a, a lot of other people did due to COVID because of my previous experience but uh, you know 
even uh, one thing I did, I do know uh, when I was a state assembly, but nobody really uh, cared what I had to say uh, a lot. But what now, now being in, in Congress, people pay attention. Yeah. Uh, pay, mm -hmm. People pay attention and, and people are very passionate about a, a lot of different issues. And, uh, you know, you know, I've, you get, you know, part of the job, I hate to say it's part of the job, you get death threats, uh, you get, you know, people calling up, screaming at you, you get people calling up telling you how much they like what you're doing. Uh, but even on the worst days in this right. job, even mm -hmm. on the worst days, uh, I don't regret leaving sure. the assembly. I've been able to do a lot of good over the last two years, and I'm going to continue to do good uh, in the future. Yeah, you know, and just touching on one of your points, you know, uh, I think I think it's lost on people sometimes when they when they decide, you know, what we've had we've had enough of so and so elected leader, and we want someone new. And when they bring someone in with no experience whatsoever, it's going to be years before they get the very basic things right, and for no other reason than, you know, they still got the training wheels on, right? And and so then people become frustrated and they say, well, we put you in because we thought we were going to get more results than the last guy, but the last guy knew what he was doing. Maybe you weren't, you know. So there's something to be said to, you know, a little bit of political loyalty in a sense. When you've got somebody in a position, especially on the national level, that can get things done, you know, it might be better to say, hey, listen, we need you to prioritize this other thing over something else, Rather than we need someone entirely new who's going to be years before they can do anything. Yeah. And, and, and when you, you talk about the last guy, it makes me laugh because the last guy in my race was, in my seat, was Peter King. Yes. <laughs> so 28 yeah, yeah. years in Congress alone and, you know, beloved Peter yeah. King. Uh, still, thank God, you know, he talks to me still. He, he answers my calls, gives me advice. I'm happy that, so happy, happy and lucky uh, that he does. And, you know, he did so much uh, between, you know, he was a chair of Homeland Security, what he did for New York. What he did for 9/11 uh, victims and and survivors, sure. uh, you know what he's just what he's done, what he did during Sandy, you know, I mean that was my first game. What he did, uh, you know, to get the federal government to come up here and help out after Sandy, you sure. know, so he's done a lot of good, and those are very big shoes to fill, and uh, you know, it, it it's going to be a very long time before I can I, I can uh, I can fill Peter King's shoes, um, but uh, we we're working very hard, you know, you know we. And, and I'm like I said, I'm happy that he does talk to me still because he, he does give me that advice on how I can do good things in the district. Right. And it's and one thing about Peter, it wasn't about party all the time. It was he did what he needed to do to to produce for this district, and that's our job. That's exactly. So right. that's yeah. what I that's what I take down to me. I, I have to produce for the district. It can't right. always be party. Right. Yeah, it's not party and it's not personal, right? Yeah. So you may have a personal feeling about a particular yeah. issue. Your district needs you to vote a particular way, and then that's that's how you advocate, and that's yeah. how you go, and that's I think that's very important. That's what people look for in elected representatives. Yeah. All right. So just you know, moving through, uh, you know, and getting up to date. Let's talk a little bit. You know, I know, uh, like we said, uh, a couple of committees that you've been on. You know, with small business and how infrastructure touches that. Now let's talk a little bit about the homeland security side, and really something that people are learning more about than they ever wanted to, cybersecurity, right? And and all the crazy things that can happen. I mean, we've all heard about different breaches that happen on credit card side of things and whatever else. There's many more crazy things that can happen. As more and more as we, as we rely on the quote-unquote cyber side of things, we need to rely on good policies for cybersecurity. So, you know, would you let us know a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I sit on the Homeland Security, and I'm the actual ranking member on the Cybersecurity, cybersecurity mm -hmm. and Infrastructure uh, Subcommittee. Uh, so, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I deal with these issues, uh, specifically with cybersecurity, every day. Uh, and you're right. It, it touches everybody from, you know, you and me on our personal level up to the biggest banks, biggest hospitals, biggest uh, power plants, you know, it, it affects everyone. Uh, it can affect everyone, uh, and, and it can affect everybody on a different level. And it's uh, there's a lot of focus on, you know, uh, protection of U.S. infrastructure. Like I said, uh, financial infrastructure, uh, energy infrastructure. You know, we had the pipeline, the Colonial Pipeline, which was sure. a huge problem last year. I mean, sure. getting shut down, you know, making sure that that doesn't happen again. So there's a, there's a lot of investment right now. Both from the infrastructure bill as well as what we're doing, uh, you know, currently making sure that uh, that U.S. Uh, systemically important critical infrastructure is protected. So, you know, working down on that on the national level, but we're also working on education on a local level. This is, you know, 
to be good on cybersecurity, to, to have good cybersecurity, it, it, there's very easy things. Mm -hmm. Update your passwords. You know, uh, sure. one of the most common passwords people use is password one two three four. And I'm sorry if that's your password. And I just said that over the internet, over the radio. But that reminds me of a movie where a guy said, "Hey, that's the same password as my luggage." Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, so update your passwords. Update your your computers and phones because a lot of those times people are like, "I don't want to update my phone." Those updates, uh, I never updated my phone before I sat on this committee. Now I do it every time because they fix. Uh, back doors into your phone and they protect you so do that there's very simple stuff that you can do for any uh, uh, any person you can just do and, and, and to protect themselves better don't open emails uh, from random people promising you uh, a prince's fortune from Nigeria like don't do it right. <laughs> there's very simple things that you can do uh, every day just to make sure that you ha you're protected your information is protected because once you have, once somebody gets in, they can steal your your identity, and 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 you definitely don't want that to happen. Yeah, and listen, you know, I want to get into a little bit of the scope of what we're talking about here. When we talk about cybersecurity, you know, you touch broadly on it, but you know, we're we're moving towards trying to get folks into more and more electric cars, and you can't go a day or two without finding out that somebody figured out somehow how they could use their phone to remote start somebody else's vehicle, and you know, all of that stuff. And then on top of that, you've got, you know, I mean, your, your, your traffic grid, you know, that's, that stuff is all moving towards automated and whatever mm -hmm. else. Like, you know, lots of, lots of bad things can happen and right down to like an email. Like you can get an email that you think is from a friend of yours and it has a link and you, you can see the link says, you know, puppies.com. But when you click that link, it may not go to puppies.com, right? Anything that we have that's electric and electronic that can be remotely controlled could be exploited. And that's why, like you said, it's very important to get your, all of your all of your electronic devices, if there's an update available, update it and and practice good personal safety. Change your passwords. Don't use common passwords. You know, and I, that can be frustrating for people, right? You have 15 different accounts. How am I supposed to remember all these things? Some people like to use one password for everything, but then one person figures out the password for one thing. Now they know it for everything. This is the trade off <laughs> for the conveniences of of this this electronic world that we're in. Uh, but it's very important. That's why, you know, like, I, again, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what you're doing with cybersecurity uh, in terms of homeland security and, and just general, you know, best practices for people, you know, working on policies that make it so that things are as safe as possible and people are as safe as possible using, using technology. Yeah, and, and you said it, best practices. You're only as good as, you know, yeah. as your best defense. So, I mean, if you're, if you're taking those risks... You can't you can't be upset you know if you're opening those emails you, you know those are risks you have to not take the risk and and then you'll be you'll be much more productive and you're right with you know quantum computing and with AI uh, uh, everything coming out right now and and everything's getting more uh, everything's gonna be on computer yeah. soon I mean it is just getting we're, we're becoming more and more reliant on it so we have to be better protected and uh, it's through these best practices where we, we will be best uh, sure better protected. And education. I mean, we just passed a bill to, to have a focus K through 12, get cybersecurity more, uh, more part of, uh, you know, to make it a bigger part of, of education because right now my, my 10 year old nephew can, can probably, is probably better at the iPhone than I am, Yes. but uh, using the iPhone, but you know, he, 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 there's not that focus at school and, and maybe there's 700,000 cybersecurity jobs open today. 700,000 is the mm -hmm. estimate across the country. Mm -hmm. And if we get start training people young, we'll be able to fill those jobs and we'll be better protected. China, Russia, they fo they focused on this years ago. Yes. We're a little behind the game on that. Uh, so we need to we need to step up. Uh, I would agree. Uh, so now moving on, you know, again, it's, it's, I've already said this is a big deal for me. I think it's a big deal for my members. I think it's a huge deal for the region, uh, but also for the state of New York. But just want to get into a little bit of the infrastructure bill and and what it does and you know maybe we can get into the the particulars yeah absolutely like i said we, you know we talked a little bit about uh the money that went to long island railroad um there is uh, i believe 13 or 14 billion going directly to roads uh we're seeing that on the long island express being repaved we're seeing that on the um we're seeing that on the uh, southern state and, and i think northern state's got a project and sag the coast will be done soon uh we're now seeing investments in projects. You know, people have talked about, uh, you know, in where I live over in uh, by the Oakdale merge, it's a sure. huge problem that 
there's been a focus on. I had a call with the Federal Highway uh, uh, Administrator the other day New York, from, for New York State uh, who had just met with the New York State DOT. They're moving forward with uh, the environmental uh, study, which is good, which is the first part. Sure. Once that's done, mm-hmm. uh, then we can move forward with actual construction. So that bill, if it wasn't for that infrastructure bill passing, they wouldn't be able to move forward with this part. So it you know, you're going to see, and it's not just stuff right away. You're going to see infra- uh, money invested over the next couple of years. That it, that it's 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 going to make such a huge difference to people's lives. You know, uh, MacArthur Airport. Uh, yeah. Are, you know, right here in Suffolk County, got um, thirty million dollars. You know, to, mm-hmm. to, to for upgrades there. It, it, it's a huge issue. Um, our electrical grid, our uh, Wireless grid, you know, that's that's another, that's another huge, huge, yep. huge mm-hmm. investment that we're going to see coming to Long Island. It, it, it's uh, and also, um, you know, I, we talked about Sandy briefly. Uh, it, in investment in uh, raising roads, you know, roads mm-hmm. that were ten years ago underwater due to Sandy, uh, still have not been fixed. Right. Um, you know, there's going to be uh, money coming in to help raise those roads. Uh, we just got, you know, we just got put in something for next year. Three million dollars we helped Babylon get down at Babylon to help raise some roads uh, in uh, in the Amity Harbor area that should have been done, you know, uh, ten years right. ago, and, yeah. and now we'll be able to do it. It's um, it's very exciting, and I'm, I'm it, and I love the fact that I can work with the local electeds, the town supervisors, the mm-hmm. county uh, legislator, the county executives, the village mayors. You know, I'm, I'm, I have a great working relationship with all of them, and. You know, one thing we can do on on, on the uh, the federal side is we can bring money home, uh, so these uh, these municipalities they know the projects that they need to get done. Sure, I can get them the money to get it done, which is awesome. It's a great, yeah, it's a great, it's a great working relationship yeah. we have with everybody. And you know, listen, I I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't talk about the sewer side of things as well, because uh, one, I have a lot of history with that, having come out of public works and and dealing directly with uh, sewer installs. Uh, but but what this infrastructure does really. It's a huge help to businesses. It's a huge help to residents. And it is a huge help to the ecology, right? The, the, the fact that we're taking in, uh, you know, wastewater, treating it to, you know, lower nitrate levels than drinking water has uh, and putting that out into the bay, that, that makes, um, you know, some of the tourism that we, you know, we rely on, you know, in summers, you know, I mean, everybody knows, you know, Long Island and the beaches on Long Island along the South Shore. I mean, these are destinations. And to have uh, to have the sewers functioning properly, installed in areas where they normally wouldn't be, mm-hmm. and what it can do for businesses as well, because sometimes we talk about businesses and, you know, all they want to do is be able to, you know, have a dishwasher, right? You know, install a dishwasher, but they can't. Uh, and you get sewers in, and now you can have a dishwasher, and that means you don't have to put paper plates out anymore, and, and your establishment's a little, you know, a little more frequented because people aren't eating your food off of a paper plate, and they've got an actual dish that they can. So uh, there's, there's all these little things. I had to throw that in there because, you know, this is, this is something I think I'm going to care about for my life. I think that sewers are something that's really great for Long Island and is very feasible for Long Island, specifically given what uh, what kind of material we have in the ground, what mm-hmm. our elevations are, and, and, and how the whole sewer system works. I think it's a great thing. Yeah, it's, it's one of the few things that, you know, environmentalists and uh, the Chamber of Commerce agree on, you know, these sewers. Yeah, like I said, you know, you know, and it's not just the paper plates. It's getting more seats uh, into a restaurant or a, 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 building, a, a business being able to add a, a extra square footage onto their building so, because they can, and they can have more product to sell. You know, this... This all needs to. You know, this all makes it a lot. Uh, sewers make it a lot easier to ha- happen. You know, you you can go to a restaurant all over the country now, and, and they'll have Blue Point oysters on, yeah. on the menu. And they've, mm-hmm. they've Blue Point oysters. You know, we're, we're known for Blue Point oysters, uh, but they no longer really come from the ones that they're shipping around the, the uh-huh. country aren't from the Great South Bay anymore. They now say Blue Point oysters, Long Island Sound, and it's like, well, mm-hmm. boy, Blue Point's on the South Shore. Yes, but because of the the nitrates in the water, it, it, we don't get the you know, mm-hmm. you don't have. The oysters like we used to, and uh, you know, getting those sewers will, will help. You know, hopefully bring that business back. That was a huge right. business. Uh, you know, it's getting back. Uh, but I want I want Blue Point oysters to come from the Great South. Yes, like they and should I, have. <laughs> another thing that you're going to see is when the Blue Point oysters are coming from the great, you know, coming out of the Great South Bay, those oysters are they filter feeders, so also, right? Yep, so yep. you're going to see that water dramatically change. Yep. You know, in in, in quality. So. 
Again, just another great aspect of the infrastructure bill. Had to throw it in. My apologies. No, it's good because we're actually working. Like right now, we. It, it, I'm happy you brought it up because we just got a couple, uh, two or three million dollars, three million dollars for to help um, uh, put the sewers down Main Street in in uh, Central Islip. I'm gonna we're, mm-hmm. we're gonna do something with uh, the county and the town to announce sure. that. Uh, we also have money in the budget for next year. Um, for uh, we got. Five million for Oakdale, which is, which is great. huge, and uh, and uh, That's three an million. area that desperately needs it for sure. Yeah, it does. Oh, low low ground water. You know, nobody there can use the dishwasher <laughs> in their own house. Uh, and we got, I think, uh, three million to help partner with the county to to uh, to do sewers in Holbrook and in, in the main streets there. I mean, and and this is not the end of it. This is just the first year. We're going to keep working and 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 building into more areas that don't have it. This is just the start of what this first year investment from that five-year bill will do. Yeah. Awesome. And you know, that kind of leads me into, you know, my next topic, which is really talking about what the federal budget looks like and, uh, and, and what you see, uh, you know, as, as far as priorities for 2023, at least on the, on the, on the earmarking and spending side of things. Yeah. Well, I, well, we're, we're right now the uh, fiscal year 23 budget is being negotiated down in Congress. I think, mm-hmm. uh, uh, this past week they were doing, um, or was, Recently, they were doing the markup through appropriations. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're seeing you know, one of the big things uh, we talked about cybersecurity. You're seeing an increase in spending there, which is good. Yes. Uh, especially with everything that's happened, we need to make sure our assets are protected. So on the on the big level, that's said. But uh, you know, on on the smaller level, uh, not as much a small level, but locally, you know, we are directing money uh, to very uh, important projects, uh, whether it be infrastructure, whether or uh, research. I mean, um, we're directing money to things that are very important to Long Islanders. I was the lead Republican this year on uh, and last year on a uh, on the breast cancer research, peer-to-peer research uh, program. Hundred and huge issue in, in Long Island. $150 million. Mm-hmm. $150 million uh, uh, in next year, in this year's budget and next year's budget uh, for, for research, uh, uh, for prevention and, and to help cure uh, uh, breast cancer. Uh, money, we... we we got we're getting money towards a lot of other uh, cancer research. I was the lead Republican on on uh, on, on getting money uh, to research lupus. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we were also I was also the the lead Republican. Um, you know, on on uh, on a bill that uh, helps uh, make sure that nine eleven healthcare is is funded. Right now, there's there's a shortfall there, and right. we're we're you know we're trying to you know. And what people don't get is you know you talk to members of Congress, they say oh nine eleven that was twenty years ago. Uh, but there's we're still seeing it here in Long Island. People are seeing it all over the sure. all over the country. Mm-hmm. The the effects, uh, the aftermath of of that day, and the people who worked on the pile, uh, you know, and the health consequences that they've seen from being there. We're seeing it. And what people don't realize, the 9/11 health care fund. Uh, there's somebody who who in every congressional district, but one in the country, is getting care from that that, mm-hmm. that health. So it affects every congressional district almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. You know, people don't understand that. And uh, right now, cancers are worse than we thought. Treatments are more expensive than we thought. So with, there's a shortfall there. But we owe it uh, to these sure. men and women uh, sure. who are there. We owe it to make sure that they have the treatment. Uh, so I'm the lead Republican on that, uh, trying to get that uh, that taken care of. We're trying to get that t- taken care of this year because we don't want somebody going. We don't want a, a FDNY or NYPD cop or anyone, Port Authority officer, right. going going to right. the hospital and say, well, we, we can't cover your costs anymore. Right. So that's huge. Yeah. Um, so those are the big projects. Again, there's a lot of local stuff we're doing, uh, hoping to have it in you know road money, sewer money, um, investments, for, you know, for uh, people like, um, you know, I, I'm trying to think what else we did. We, we're, we're helping uh, Massapequa a supervisor, or the town of Oyster Bay supervisor, supervisor, do a project there, which is very important to the community. Uh, we got money for uh, to address the plume in in oh, Levittown, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. which is huge. Mm-hmm. I mean, to help with uh, water uh, cleaning wells there, sure. five million for that. So I mean, it's there's a lot, a lot of stuff that we're doing, and we're bringing money back home for that are going to help people uh, and and re- positively affect their day to day lives. Yeah, it's huge. And listen, they, you know, infrastructure is, I think, uh, one of the main things we're concerned about. Um, but that being said, policy is also very mm-hmm. important as well. So I mean, are there any policy issues you're tracking? Things that you want to get ahead of uh, and, and be helpful on. Well, yeah, I mean, it, this is right now um, a huge, huge issue that everybody's uh, feeling the effect of um, is inflation, uh, gas prices, 
uh, oil price. I mean, and you're going to feel, I mean, gas prices are expensive now and we, you know, uh, with how things are going, you know, right now we don't, in, we don't think anything will, will happen before election day, you know, and the last thing people need is $6, uh, you know, gallon oil mm-hmm. for heating when the winter comes along, you know, they're feeling it now on gas prices, the pump, they're going to feel it. Uh, they're going to feel it, uh, in, uh, in October and November. Uh, with uh, with oil, uh, heating oil. That's that's some food prices. You know, we've been we had an expert come in front of the small business committee and say food prices are going to continue to go up because of um, because of uh, you know the harvest not having enough drivers, uh, truck drivers have not, not having people harvest. So we need to tackle inflation. We need to make sure that uh, people can uh, afford to get to work. People can afford to feed their family. Sure. Um, so you know, n- not you know. Making sure that the uh, inflation inflation is addressed is something that uh, you know we really need to get ahead of, and, and right now it, uh, it seems to be getting away from the current administration. <laughs> well, listen, uh, this is this is for me to say, and not for you to agree with, but uh, we'd certainly like to see uh, the federal minimum wage addressed. Uh, I think that's something that that is a universal issue. Uh, and outside of that, you know, I agree. I, I think that everybody everywhere is feeling the crunch, so to speak. And some of it's going to be adjusted behavior on the part of consumers. Uh, Some of it is going to be policy changes that affect how businesses operate, where they can profit, where they can't. Uh, But overall, you know, I mean, interest rates can only do so much. And, you know, a market correction can only do so much. So it's a lot of work. It means a lot of conversations. Again, this just brings me back to the beginning of this show and just talking about the diversity of needs that this country represents. And, and policy decisions like that mean a lot of input from a lot of different people and, and a lot of a lot of people with basically everything on the line. So, uh, I, again, I just want to thank you for uh, being the kind of person that put yourself into a position in life to really put yourself, quote unquote, in harm's way. Like you say, you know, you get the death threats and people call up. They're not happy about this. They're not happy about that. And maybe it's not even something that has to do with you. It just happens to be something they saw on the news yeah. and they're blaming you because you got an R next to your name. Uh, and and that, all that being the case, it's not for everyone to step up, put themselves in harm's way to help people. And I think you're doing the most good. Uh, you know, your time in the assembly was great, uh, but, but it's got to be rewarding to see how much you can get done for, for so many people uh, being in Congress. And I want to I wanna wish you luck. I know you've got a primary coming up. Uh, and with that being said, you know, I, I tend to ask a lot of questions that I'm interested in. <laughs> and every once in a while it occurs to me, you know, maybe the person I'm talking to has something they want to share that I haven't thought of. So I just want to give you an opportunity. Is there anything I missed, something you want to put out in the world? I, I mean, I just want to say, uh, and we've, uh, we've had a great working relationship uh, when I was in the assembly. Now in, in Congress, uh, your passion for your members uh, and doing the right thing is that's why I love working with, working with you. You know, we, we might not be able to agree on everything, but you always sure. we always know where we, we we stand and everything, and we do agree on a lot. And uh, but uh, you know, we've had a great working relationship. I can't wait to continue that. Uh, you know, I've always talked about a uh, my my work with AME members. I when I practice law. You know, before I got into Congress, you know, I used to do a lot of stuff out in the county clerk's office, the county treasurer's office, and and your members uh, are some of the best uh, to work with. It was, it was, it was great to, to be able to do with them, especially in the real estate uh, section. Uh, just phenomenal, uh, and uh, you know, that's why I'm happy to have your back. I'm happy to have your members back on 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 things, and I can't thank you. You you've supported me. Uh, this group has supported me from the beginning, uh, AME, and uh, I can't thank you again for your support. Now, uh, we're going to do a lot of good things together. So. Uh, Thank you very much for having me on, and uh, I look forward to, c- to continuing that. And uh, August twenty third is the primary; it's the first time we've we've uh, we've had an August primary, uh, and then the general elections on November eighth. But you know, make sure everybody uh, goes out and votes on August twenty uh, on August twenty third. It's very important. So again, uh, thank you, former Assemblyman Andrew Garbarino, current Congressional District Two. Yep. Uh, you know, one Congressman, two uh, candidate. And uh, again, thank you. I know how busy you are. I know how much you deal with in a day. So thanks for carving out the time to come down and, and, and speak in person with me. To our listeners, we'll speak to you next week.